Hey, I've been on board for about a week now. And as always, it's crazy hectic. We're currently sailing through the South China Sea. We left Singapore after passing our inspection and we're heading to the port of Kuantan. And that's exactly where you're going to see today's vlog from. We're going to Kuantan, Malaysia. Welcome back on board. So as you guys can see, we are in the port of Kuantan. I hope you guys enjoyed that little bit of an intro that I prepared of the cargo operations. So this is a chemical tanker ship and I normally sail on chemical tanker ships. As you guys know, we had an inspection in the last port and over the years, after doing a bunch of inspections, I've learned that dangerous it is for you to take a camera out on deck, especially on a tanker ship. You can only probably shoot on deck on a tanker ship when you have permission from the captain and when your ship has zero cargo. So for me to be able to show you guys the cargo operation in more detail is going to be a little hard, but I'm going to figure it out and I'm going to need special permissions to be able to shoot that so yes as you guys can see we are in Kuantan the loading operations on we got done with the inspection in Singapore and everything went well it went really really smooth you guys so that's fantastic I'm gonna show you around the port really really quick today we're gonna be addressing control testing on cargo ships because this is a question that I've been asked over and over by a lot of you subscribers on this channel but how officers do control testing and what control testing actually is so I'm not gonna do the entire control test myself but I'm gonna explain and break down the entire process but first Let's check out this view. As you guys can see, this is the port of Kuantan. That's a bulk carrier standing right there. That's the bulk carrier terminal. On the front of there, we have our container terminals. All the container ships go there and we are standing at a tanker terminal. This is what it looks like, you guys. This is Kuantan. The sights that you get to see on a ship are very, very different to what you would ever imagine on land. You're never going to be able to see something as amazing as this on land. And it's truly fantastic. As you guys can see, I'm on the other side. I'm going to show you a little bit more of the port. I'm not going to be going way out. This is the port of Kuantan. That's where the tanks are over there in that corner on the hill. This is a beautiful little ship. This is Bob. He's a dummy. We use him for anti-piracy. He's a friend of mine. He keeps me busy when I'm here on the ship when I have absolutely nobody to talk to. So Bob is always here. Say hi and what you're looking at next, that's our cargo manifold and that's exactly the hoses get connected. We have pumps and tanks along the length of the ship on both sides, the port side which is the left and the starboard side which is the right and the cargo comes basically from the shoreline using those pipes. As you can see those pipes go way back and they're going all the way to the shore tank so the cargo is going to come from there. It comes into these hoses, they have pumps over here that have suction coming all the way. From there it's going to pump into these hoses, from the hoses it goes into our manifolds and for my manifolds, it will go into the respective tanks. And in short, that's basically how you load chemicals. But there's so much more technicality to this that I'm going to have to make an entire video on loading operations because chemical tankers have so many cargoes and there's so much you need to know before you can actually load a cargo on a particular ship. It's crazy, but it's also a lot of fun and you're always on your toes on these ships. It's been almost two weeks and it really doesn't feel like two weeks. It's something that you just got to get used to. It's very different to dry ships. So now a common question that I've been asked on this channel a lot by you guys is with respect to control testing of the bridge pre-departure. Now as an officer of the watch, when you are in a port, when you finish the cargo operations, you're going to have somebody known as a pilot. A pilot is a local navigator that's going to come on board your vessel and he's going to drive your ship in the port waters and take it outside from the port water to open sea. You'll be given a pilot boarding time. So this is something known as a control test that you have to carry out as a duty officer when you're on board a vessel pre-departure every port and control testing is critical. Today I'm going to run through control testing for you guys because a lot of you guys are cadets who are watching this channel and a lot of y'all want to know about control testing but there's something that you guys got to keep in mind the fact that control testing is going to be different on every ship. It depends on what kind of ships you're sailing on, what equipment you have, also the requirements from company to company are different but one thing that you guys want to keep in mind that 
all times is that every little procedure that you have to follow during control testing is written in two places. One is your company checklist, which is known as your SMS, your safety management system. So you can just pull out the checklist. I'm going to show you ours in a little bit. And the other is basically SOLAS. There are certain tests that are required as per SOLAS, that's safety of life at sea. As a brand new officer, if you're a first time third mate, or if you're a first time engineer and you're joining a vessel, you're going to also have to perform control tests. And if you don't know how to do it, and if you have no idea what you're supposed to do, pull out the checklist and just follow it. So right now in my hand, I have my company's pre-arrival checklist. This is the checklist that you have to follow to carry out all the tests. Almost two pages long and there's a lot that you need to check. Also, every company's safety management system is confidential, so I can't run through the entire checklist for you. But what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to run through all the bridge equipments and tell you exactly what I normally check. Basic requirements are there for you to check as an officer. So you guys have pretty much already seen my bridge. So we have no bridge wings on our ship. As you can see, we have the consoles on the side here on the port as well as the starboard side way over there and we have a central console over here which is basically your central command center we have no bridge wing you may be working on a ship that has bridge wings you're going to have controls on the outside that you need to check so let's get into it Okay, one of the first equipments that you're going to be able to see on my bridge are the GPS. We have the GPS 1 and the GPS 2. Now, with respect to the GPS, there's not a lot that you need to check. You basically need to go in and check your HDOP error and your GDOP error if there is any, and you want to check your signal to noise ratio. You basically want to make sure you have enough satellites that are around at all times. And if not, then you're supposed to pretty much inform the master and keep him appraised of the situation. That when you're getting your position feed and you're leaving the port, you have maximum accuracy at all times. The next equipment that we have here is your speed log or Doppler log. Now, your speed log is basically very different to your GPS. Your GPS will give you speed, but that'll give you speed over ground. Your speed log is going to give you speed through the water. Now, these are two very, very different things. Long story short, you need speed through the water at all times. It's used in calculations for distance purposes. Also want to use water speed for collision avoidance. Your speed log is running just fine and there are no errors on it. So that's the second thing you want to do. Now, every ship is fitted with radio equipment. We have a VHF here, which is on low power and you have one on the other side. Side. So your VHF are your very high frequency radios. In port, your radios are going to be kept on low power at all times. You want to make sure that the transceiver, which is this guy, the push to talk button, it works perfectly fine. You can transmit well, you have no issues with that. You run a self-diagnostic test, so you want to do that and you want to log it down. Next, we're going to look at these guys. These guys are really special equipment. This is a marine radar. Now, we normally have two radars on most cargo ships, have an X and an S band. You want to make sure that your radar has gyro feed, it has GPS feed, all the equipments that need to be connected to it at all times. As you can see, we have all the equipments right here and you want to make sure that you only turn on your radar when you're departing the port. You never want to turn it on before that. This are your steering controls and your emergency communication that you test all the emergency communications between the bridge and the engine control room. In case anything goes wrong when you're departing and you have failure of any equipment, you can still contact the technical team in emergency and get emergency procedures started. So emergency communication is very, very important. These are your steering motors. Now, the steering system is really, really important. You have to firstly make sure that you have two steering motors running. This is the sole ass requirements. Also want to make sure that you test your steering correctly. So, but what you want to do is you want to test your follow-up system and your non-follow-up system. And let me explain what is what. The follow-up system is basically this system right here, which is basically your steering wheel. You want to make sure that when you turn your steering here, it also turns the rudder. Normally, this test is performed between an engineer and an officer. You also want to test your non-follow-up system. Now, the non-follow-up system is if in case the wheel behind you fails, you have a special lever here and another special lever right here. It's going to be a backup system to your follow-up system, which is your steering wheel. You want to keep in mind with respect to your steering system is the amount of time it takes to go from hard port to hard starboard. If you don't understand what hard port to hard starboard is, it's basically this. You put your hand on your steering wheel, there's a maximum rudder angle that your steering can actually go to, which is hard port. And the steering can also go all the way to the other end, which is hard starboard. The amount of time that it takes to go from port to starboard is basically your hard over time. And this is a SOLAS requirement. You know how long it actually takes and it should be complying with SOLAS chapter five. This is something that you need to lock down no matter which company you're in. The most important thing is your compass. You have a gyro compass as well as a magnetic compass. You want to compare your compasses. Now, if you're on a ship that has bridge wings, you're going to have gyro compasses outside. A lot of times they will lose their synchronization from the central compass or the master gyro. So you want to make sure you go and you synchronize your compasses. On our ship, 
we have this system right here which is basically our bridge wing is enclosed so since it's not exposed to the weather at any given point in time our synchronization pretty much stays the same you also want to note down the difference between your gyro compass and your magnetic compass because you need to understand what the difference is in case you have a gyro failure on our ship we have a propeller that's a controllable pitch propeller. It's CPP. On other ships, you'll have a fixed pitch propeller. It depends on what you have, but you have to test your engines, pre-departure port, pre-arrival port. And a very important part about testing your engines is making sure that your engines can go in reverse. This is basically known as the astern test. If you're in an emergency and you have to go reverse, it's really important that your engine actually goes reverse when you give the order. And there's a few factors that you have to keep in mind where certain ports will not allow you to test the engine until the pilot comes on board. So make sure you follow all the required regulations. Uh, you also want to make sure your autopilot system is working correctly because at one point you're going to go into open sea once you depart the port and you're going to switch over to autopilot, test the off course alarm. You also want to test your ship's horn or whistle in case you leave the port and you have fishing traffic or you have restricted visibility. You're going to need your fog horn to work correctly and if it doesn't you're in a really bad and tight situation so keep that in mind. The equipment that you're looking at right now is the automatic identification system. Now, automatic identification system is also known as the AIS. Most modern day cargo ships have this fitted and most fishing boats have this fitted as well. So it's really, really helpful. You can basically get information about another ship as long as they have the same equipment fitted on their bridge. Now, like your very high frequency radios, your AIS is also put into low power mode when you're in the port. So you want to make sure you change that. You also have something known as a navigational status, which you want to change on the AIS. And last but not the least, we have electronic charts. As you can see, this is the position of my ship right here. This is how we're going to come out and then we follow the larger route. So you basically want to make sure that you have your routes ready and you normally draw your routes on electronic charts nowadays. Most modern day ships have shifted over to electronic charts and they also have all the updates that are required for the particular voyage. Follow up on any navigational warnings that come in. They need to be plotted on your chart at all times. While there's a lot more testing that you can do on your bridge and your engine room, it's very variable. A lot of ships are fitted with thrusters on the front as bow thrusters. So you want to make sure they work well. You want to test them out and you want to make sure the bow thrusters respond that's something that even we do on our ship. Now there is other emergency equipment such as your GMDSS equipment, your EPUBs, search and rescue radar transponders like the one we have here. This is all emergency equipment that has to work. So do a quick visual check for all of this before you depart the port. Last but not the least, coffee area is perfectly stacked up because as an officer or an engineer on board a ship, once you depart, you are going to be sipping on a lot of coffee because life at sea is hectic and we all know it. Hey guys, this was pretty much my basic explanation and breakdown for control testing. Like I said, follow your checklists, follow SOLAS at all times and follow your company policy at all times. And as long as you do that, you should be pretty much good to go. Safety is of paramount importance. I'm gonna go get some food right now. Oh, started already? He's my brother. <laughs> He's my teammate. So this is basically the cargo control room. I'm not allowed to film here, so I'm not gonna spend too much time filming here. You got burgers? Yes, babe. <laughs> So we ordered burgers, we spoke to the surveyor here, we got ourselves some really nice Big Macs. So for all you guys who actually think short leave is a thing, short leave doesn't exist on cargo ships anymore, especially during COVID. So the only fun that we can have is with burgers and food. That's all we have for entertainment now. That's the life. Chief Engineer, that's our captain. Mr. Chief Cook, he's the reason we have all this amazing food on board. <laughs> it is 7.30 in the evening here on board. I'm heading back to my cabin. Uh, I still have to do an entire cleanup and a cabin tour for you guys. But uh, that's basically what the day has looked like over here right now. We're going to be sailing out of Kuantan tonight and heading to Singapore. So I'll try and get a little bit of a time lapse for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Season 2 has finally begun you guys. This channel is growing only because of you guys. So I want to take a minute to thank all of y'all for all your amazing support. I'm going to catch you guys in the next one. Stay tuned for more. As you guys know, we have a lot more videos of Life at Sea planned on this channel. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. Peace.